If you are rising, you've got more money and you've got more investment into your security military muscles. And what do you do? Do you really rise as a peaceful nation or it causes、uh, changes of a status quo? I think Japan spoke from its own experiences with Chinese、uh, trying to change the status quo into, in terms of territorial、uh, delimitation, for example, in terms of Senkaku Islands. And、uh, China wanted to create a, a, a fait accompli、uh, by making the incursions of、uh, aircrafts and, uh, uh, and vessels、uh, into Japanese waters or waters and under Japanese controls. And the, the, uh, another clear example is South China Sea. Who is exploiting those?、Uh, Resources, freedom of navigation. Yeah, yes. So, Enrico, do you want to reply? And if we could yeah, of focus、oh, um, the status quo on this area, so say, yeah, but actually, 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 agree with him.、Yeah. Uh, there is an, a, a unilateral attempt from China.、Mm. So, when I said Fumio Kishida was right,、uh, but he only said half of the story.、Uh, actually, China is doing that. Welcome to Taiwan Plus Point, offering insight and analysis on the latest global news from a Taiwan perspective. I'm Ian Kavat. At Asia's biggest security summit, the Shangri-La Dialogue, Taiwan was a focal point. With China saying it would fight to the very end over Taiwan, and the United States saying that stability in the Taiwan Strait was of international concern. So, where does this leave U.S.-China relations? And what advice did Ukraine's president offer on Taiwan? Today, I'm joined by Raymond Sung, Taiwan New Constitution Foundation Deputy CEO, and Dr. Enrico Cao, Taiwan Center for International Strategic Studies Associate Researcher. The Defense Minister's speech from China was received as being very aggressive towards Taiwan. Did it surprise you that Taiwan was such a focal point? Of both the U.S. and China's speeches,、uh, no, absolutely not.、Um, it's just the logical consequence of、uh, the latest evolutions that we've seen throughout the, the, the last years. You know, from the intrusions in the ADZ and the various other、uh, issues that we we are now by now used in Taiwan to see. So it's not、um, it's not a, a novelty for us.、Uh, this trend is actually due to me in the in the short middle term. Um, due to continue, unless、um, the United States and China, in particular, they found a way to de-escalate、uh, the current trend, which is、uh, escal escalatory,、uh, fundamentally. And does the rhetoric translate into action? Does this mean that Taiwan is in more danger?、Uh, in danger of war, if that's your meaning, I don't expect、uh, any conflict in the short term, of course, but. This escalatory trend in lack of changes in the paradigm that regulates the relationship between Taiwan,、uh, the United States, and China, is obviously going to towards a more、uh, a more you know serious or aggravated situation in the in the future.、Mm -hmm. uh, this also is connected with, of course, other events that are ongoing in Europe,、uh, and of course with the situation in the South China Sea. So these events are somewhat. Uh, all interconnected at this point because China is perceived as a, as an ally of Russia. So、uh, these things has to be has to, have to be taken into into account when before it used to be the cross strait only. Raymond Song, what、um, does this rhetoric achieve? Actually, I was quite startled by Wei Fenghe's statements. Actually,、uh, I agree absolutely with Enrico that、uh, in Taiwanese years there won't be no surprises. It won't be so surprising, but I think for the international communities, I think、uh, Wei's、uh, statement falls short of、uh, the expectations of those present, or、uh, present, or the in the general in the international security communities, in the sense that、uh, the focus of、uh, Shangri-La dialogue this time is、uh, the security of Asia with uh, uh, China, with、uh, considered as the main.、Uh, Sources of uh, concerns. Uh, uh, a lot of ha changes have happened in international community, especially the war between Ukraine and Russia, and the I think、uh, states communities in general really want to see that no more war being broken out 
uh, especially in Indo-Pacific, especially that uh, given that Indo-Pacific has uh, two thirds of uh, global GDP, and uh, so people is it gather together to tell China, maybe you can ease the tension a bit. We want to de de-escalate this situation, but the rhetoric of China remains the same. Of course, in all this, Taiwan is the focal, the center uh, in of of those security concerns. And uh, that was startling. And um, I mean, the gaps between international expectations and the lack of uh, uh, flexibility or rigidity in Chinese uh, terms. Mm. It seemed to indicate that there isn't resolution of the underlying issues between the United States and China. Um, I wonder whether you read it, Enrico, as sort of each side uh, accusing the other side of bullying. And so basically each side is saying that the other is driving the two towards confrontation and conflict. China keeps uh, invading the AIZ. It's, it's not big stuff uh, for, for many analysts. Uh, however, it's, it's a constant provocation. Um, it does the same in South China Sea with the Filipino fishermen, of course. These concerns, the, the, the international community, because it sends the signal that the international order is being challenged. And so it doesn't become a regional problem as China would like it to be, it becomes a global problem. Uh, so yes, there is, a, there is an escalatory trend. And the United States, um, on their sides, they, they can come up with like, like the, least, the, the latest, you know, uh, President Biden statements where he, he was trying to convey a certain message where he would say that he would, the, the United States would defend Taiwan in case of conflict. Of course, that's perceived by China as, as, a, as a sort of uh, not really stepping a red line, in my opinion, uh, but it's getting very close. So China perceives those as uh, alarming situations. And uh, as many other scholars say, say, the tendency is that when China sees a window closing, a window of opportunity closing, they tend to become very nervous. So the window of opportunity closing means that they don't have an opportunity to have at least a stake in discussing Taiwan future. Wei Fenghe, he mentioned uh, China's nuclear weapons. Why? The fact of, of the nuclear weapons. Now we know that China is developing more and more nuclear. The fact that he mentioned this in his speech, uh, can we read that as anything other than a threat? Of course, China tried to justify its development of weapon system, not only nuclear, but also hypersonic uh, weapons with a tremendous length of uh, trajectory uh, on the ground of self-defense, which is um, curious uh, because Russia also justifies its action of uh, invading Ukraine on the ground of self-defense. So if a country is not threatened or its existence or its security is not threatened, what is, to, what is there to defend? Um, and of course, and China extended that concept also saying that its action in the South China Sea, for example, militarization of those uh, man-made islands mm. also, also on the ground of self-defense <laughs> or defending its interests. I think the bottom line is that uh, people are arguing, the states are arguing that uh, there's a status quo, which is peace and uh, guaranteeing the prosperity of this region. And uh, that shouldn't be uh, easily be uh, uh, broken. And, uh, and that status quo has to be based on international law and rules. And those rules are pre-agreed by all countries and parties concerned. I think that's the bottom line. So we don't like to, or we should uh, try to refuse the temptation to fall into the uh, pitfall saying that mutual accusation of who is breaking the status quo. Let me tell you a very telling example. At the end of the Wei Fenghe speech, there's a, the second round of the questions, because in Wei's speech, he said there's no gene in the Chinese state to invade, to aggress, uh, launch aggression to other states. We haven't, China hasn't in history uh, occupy one inch of other states' territory, and the China's rise is peaceful, and uh, the international uh, community should cooperate rather than compete. After those beautiful words, there's uh, rounds of questions. The first saying is Vietnam. Vietnam saying, 
I think you are saying that in history, you are not invading others, but in history of Yunnan, we've been constantly invaded by China. The second state, second state say is India. India said, why did you uh, prov uh, under unprovoked conditions break, uh, broke the careful agreement reached by China and India over the 20, past 20 years? in the border, uh, referring to the border uh, incident. And the, the third one is a uh, European state saying, if you are really stick to the principle of territory integrity of states, why didn't you denounce Russia's, Russia's action against in Ukraine? Ukraine? You mm -hmm. know, the words are beautiful, but it's not easy. It's, it's a remarkable achievement of China to get the angry responses of all states around it, mm -hmm. the Southeast, Eastern Asia states, the, uh, the literal states of the South China Sea, Japan, Korea, we see remarkable change into their attitude toward their own situations, not, not to mention Taiwan. On the status quo, Taiwan has been independent, de facto independent for over 70 years. That's the status quo. And who is breaking the status quo is definitely not in the United States. How do you see this mention of, of the nuclear weapons? Uh, I, th I don't really think China is really eager to, to use nuclear weapons. Um, with the usual caveat that uh, nuclear weapons are there for strategic deterrence. So <clears throat> some countries have a first use uh, rule in, in their doctrine. That's the case of Russia, if I remember well. Um, China was mulling, if I remember well, mulling uh, changing the rules, the regulation about that. Um, uh, but it's of course a type of weapon that uh, generates stigma. So you use it when you're really under, under serious threat. Now what is a serious threat? In the past, um, uh, it used to be the risk that tr foreign troops would go boots on the ground in China. So at the point there was the risk, there was the possibility that there were some experts discussing this. But in, in lack of that, I don't really see China using nuclear weapons on, on Taiwan. Um, what you could see is a more traditional uh, attempt to invade the island combined with other, you know, uh, hybrid warfare uh, methods. That, that's actually uh, the most possible um, type of scenario. Mm -hmm. A combination of traditional invasion means and, and uh, uh, less uh, orthodox methods. And can I ask you, when do you think it might be likely that China could actually launch such an attack? There's been a number of dates thrown around, 2025, 2027. It's a multi-million dollars question, nobody knows. And uh, several factors uh, should be taken into account. The first one is the domestic politics of China, uh, whether uh, she could uh, seek smoothly uh, according to his own agenda and uh, quieting all his competitors to have her his third terms. And that will be happening in October this year. And the second big factor is how uh, the United States uh, security prepare, preparedness and together with Japan, uh, how advanced is that? And the third factor is how well prepared Taiwan's own defense uh, will be. For example, there are some saying that Taiwan is still waiting for the delivery of its uh, acquis acquisition of uh, modern weapon systems, um, which is um, maybe in two or three years, there's a gap. And uh, some people predict that if uh, China is, wants to invade Taiwan, that may be a window of opportunity. So several factors uh, should be cast in. So in this uh, security dialogue, we see uh, exchanges of views and uh, frank and uh, uh, candid uh, questions raised to a Chinese leadership. And people are expecting some indications or some uh, ease of uh, tensions from the Chinese side. But uh, unfortunately, in the public sphere, we didn't see that maybe, uh, but we did see uh, some good indications, for example, the building of uh, hotlines 
between the militaries between ROK, Republic of Korea, and China, or the resum resumption of talks between no, no matter uh, US, China, or Australia and China defenses uh, ministries, which are good signs. If they are getting into talks, maybe they can avoid a miscalculation or a misunderstanding. In Fumio Kishida's speech, Enrico, he talked about the root cause of the problems such as North Korea, South China Sea, Taiwan Strait. And he said that it was um, the shaking of the belief in the international rules mentioned. Uh, are we only talking about China as the, the, the entity, the country, the, the player that is breaking these rules? Uh, in my humble opinion, not. Uh, the fundamental problem is that's an accumulation of issues um, that have eroded the credibility of the international order. Of course, China is doing its part. So Fumio Kishida was actually correct, but that's half of the story. Uh, the other half is that the other superpower has been also uh, operating in a way that um, has alienated um, a great parts of support. I can actually mention the list. We start from the from the you know from the uh, war on terror in the early 2000s, uh, alienated all the southeast and part of the Muslim communities worldwide, uh, alienated part of the West because they didn't agree with the invasion of Iraq. Uh, Afghanistan was more debatable, but but Iraq I think is now universally and know that it was a mistake. Um, the 2008 crisis uh, and nobody was punished. So uh, this was while the United States were upholding. Uh, and pushing a narrative um, of you know rules, uh, respect of the rules, and uh, abiding by the rules, etc. So these, of course, shaken uh, the pillars, the very the very foundations of, of the international order as it had been defined for decades. Bring Raymond into this. Do you agree? Mm, and I'm sorry, do I other countries say in ASEAN? Just bring I'm it back from to Taiwan. I mm. couldn't agree what uh, Enrico just said, and uh, I think um, Prime Minister Kishida said it's a part of that. If we are not abiding by the international rule, which is pre-agreed by all parties, we will return to the jungle rules that where might makes right. Okay, he's referring to, uh, of course, the rising. Who, who, which side is rising? Which is China? And if you are rising, you got more money and you got more investment into your security military muscles. And what do you do? Do you really rise as a peaceful nation or you cause this uh, changes of a status quo? I think Japan spoke from its own experiences with Chinese uh, trying to change the status quo into, in terms of territorial uh, delimitations, for example, in terms of Senkaku Islands. And the, China wanted to create a, a, a fait complete uh, by making the incursions of uh, aircrafts and, uh, uh, and vessels uh, into Japanese waters or waters and under Japanese controls. And the, the, uh, another clear example is South China Sea. And according to the UN Convention on uh, the that each country can only have entitlement of its maritime spaces from its own coast, not from an uh, imagined line in the middle of the ocean, which is um, impossible. Uh, the, the Chinese can even extend to the doorstep of Indonesia, and which is uh, more than 2,000 kilometers from the mainland of uh, China. Why? On what basis could China make that claim and exploit those resources? The United States didn't have any territorial claim or exploit any resources in South China Sea. What the United States wanted is to just to be open, that South China to be open to all countries. And who is exploiting those uh, resources? Freedom of navigation. Yeah, yes. So Enrico, do you want to reply? And if we could yeah, of so focus is changing um, the status quo on this when area, it's my so Yeah, but I absolutely, China absolutely, China I, I absolutely agree with him. Yeah. Uh, there is an, a, a unilateral attempt from China. Mm. So when I said Fumio Kishida was right, uh, but he only said half of the story. Uh, actually, China is doing that. The problem that we have uh, on the Western side, so when you try to gather, before you would have, uh, you would try to um, you know, gather a group of allies that would actually be able to uh, 
you know, uh, stop China. Now it's much, much more difficult because of the problem of credibility that we, it's inherited by, from decades of uh, this type of shortcoming. So I agree with him. There is a nine line, uh, a nine dashes, which is absolutely fictional. Uh, we all know it is, except for China. Uh, China claims that there are historical rights, but he also signed and ratified the United Nations laws of, you know, of the sea. So once you ratify that, uh, all your prior rights, even if they were historic, I'm admitting that there are, there are I, I assume they are documentation and, and everything. But uh, all those uh, excuses fade away in front of the fact that you have, you have already signed and ratified an agreement. So in that respect, Japan is, is perfectly spot on. So we already agreed on this. Uh, why are you changing all this? Enrico, could, could, I, could I move on to Zelensky? Yes. Because um, Zelensky, after his speech in the Q&A session, um, he was asked uh, for basically advice on Taiwan in the face of China's aggressions. Um, without naming Taiwan, he said that countries must use preemptive diplomacy. And this is um, a topic that I want to ask um, your opinion. Maybe, Raymond, I can start with you. Is enough being done, do you think, in the diplomatic space on Taiwan? Uh, I think uh, Zelensky's reply is very smart, was very smart, in that uh, it has certain kind of uh, generality. It didn't, uh, he didn't specifically refer to Taiwan-China attention, but he said what should be done uh, by the international community to prevent uh, the war from happening. And he said there are two channels. The first one is by diplomatic means, which means that we can talk. I think uh, in Shangri-La dialogue, it's uh, everybody gathered to talk, try to de-escalate, to ease the tension a bit, to hear what China is going to say and uh, to question uh, its stances, which is part of the diplomacy. But Zelensky also referred to another channel, which is uh, preemptive measures, meaning that uh, a small state could, uh, should not be bullied by a bigger state uh, because they got uh, economically, territorially, and uh, uh, weaponry is more advanced than the smaller state. So the international community should come to the smaller state's aid and it should, uh, they should uh, do it uh, preemptively, preemptively, meaning before the breaking off of the wall. Which is interesting, what does that mean? Uh, meaning it should prepare uh, the smaller states to equip themselves more better, better uh, to just to getting strong to being more capable of uh, deterring the war and the others, for example, getting uh, those states into alliances like uh, Ukraine's arguing that it should be admitted to the NATO. If, if it were the case, then Ukraine should be safer, then will be not be let alone to face Russia's military alone. Um, Enrico, so on the topic of diplomacy, is Taiwan, I mean, Taiwan does not want to talk with China unless it's on equal footing and we obviously know that China does not accept that. So does that mean diplomacy between the two nations is dead? The only opportunities for change uh, in cross-strait relations are an election where either side becomes so weak uh, that it's forced to a, to, to a negotiation or uh, some party from, from the opposition uh, wins. It's not necessarily the KMT because the KMT uh, has now a, 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 a even lower share than other, other new parties. But the diplomacy, uh, the opportunities for diplomacy, they are outside, I think, the, the box of the cross strait. It means Zelensky meant we need to, to generate such a level of support for Taiwan, sustain it, and mass support for Taiwan that China feels compelled not to attack, or feels compelled to come to a table, sit to a table and negotiate. That's what is not happening for Ukraine, actually, because they are very, very, you know, scattered type of support and alliances. Thank you so much to our guests, Raymond Song and Dr. Enrico Kao. And thank you to our viewers for joining us on Taiwan Plus Point today. For more information, please download the Taiwan Plus app.